there everyone, it's Becky with the Dorky Thrifters and I'm going to do my what sold on video, my what sold on eBay video for the second half of January. So this is January 16th through the 31st. Um, as you can see, I made some changes to my spreadsheet, kind of making it a little bit better. I've had a lot of people ask me if I could share it and so I'm working on that. Um, but this is up here at the top are all my totals now. I did have them at the bottom. I like this a lot better. So you can see in this column, this is what I collected and this is what my label cost me. And this is, um, right now I've got it set to 9%. So 9% of this number is an estimate of what the shipping supplies cost me. Now I've also got this set up so that I can adjust the sales tax rate, the eBay final value fee rate, and the PayPal final value fee rate. So that way when um, eBay fees go up, I think they're supposed to go up in May, I can just adjust that really easily there. If my sales tax goes up, I can adjust that easily there, et cetera, et cetera. And then one more thing I wanted to point out is that Bonanza fees really vary. So there's really no good way to do this with Bonanza fees. So I just add those in manually. Since I don't have very many sales, as you can see, I only had two Bonanza sales. So I just take the fees off the website and just manually put them in there. It just seems a lot easier. So basically everything that's in white is what I manually have to enter myself and everything that's in either yellow, green, red, or blue is automatically calculated for me. Basically to break this down, my total cost of these 33 items was $135.07 plus $10 sales tax. My profit after all these fees are taken off was $986.01. My average profit was $29.88, so that's really, that's great, I love that. Um, my PayPal fees were $51, my Bonanza fees were $11.04, my eBay fees were $115.66. That does not include my store fees though, so that's the way that works. And it's just an Excel spreadsheet, it's nothing real fancy or anything. But if you're interested in maybe using this or at least playing around with it, let me know and I will, um, I'm working on that just to, to make it available. I'm trying to figure out what my options are. I've never done digital downloads before, but I was thinking about maybe doing a digital download for a dollar or two and, and offering that if you were interested. So let me know in the comments below if it's something you would be interested in and I will definitely get that made available. And let me just say, I am by no means an Excel expert. I'm probably not perfect. <laughs> so just putting that out there. Okay, so here are only the items that I'm about to show you in this video. So these are some of the better items that I sold during this period and also some of the more interesting things. So um, these are my totals for the 23 items that I'm getting ready to show you here in a minute. So I'll just show you this real quick. I spent $109.05 and my total profit was $890.41. My average profit for these items was $38.71. So I have a lot to show you, so I'm going to go pretty quick. This here is a vintage photo of a man. Um, I really love this photo. I had it for over a year, and I was holding out for the $30 because I just thought it was such an, an interesting photo. And um, it was an original, and it was 8 by 10 And then the cool thing about it was we found this photo in a storage unit. And also in that storage unit were some scrapbooks. And some of the scrapbooks were kind of falling apart, but I found this photo page in one of those um, scrapbooks and it had the same gentleman in it and it had his name and then it had a date of 1952 so I paired those two things together and so I sold this photo was the main part of the sale but I included the the scrapbook page as well just because I thought it was interesting and so that sold for $30 Okay, this is a vintage 1950s Bible. Um, I paid $2 for this at a thrift store. I did have an inscription in it that was dated 1954. The binding was coming apart in the back a little bit, and I had some writing in it. But it sold for $25, plus shipping. And then this is a 1930s Gideon's Bible, and I normally don't pick up Gideon's Bibles because I see them all the time, and they're just everywhere, obviously. But this one was really interesting because it was from the 1930s and it was different and it was really cool and it was in really, really nice condition. So I went ahead and picked it up for 
and it sold very quickly. I think within just a couple days it sold. So that was a, a fun find. It was it sold for thirty dollars plus shipping. And then one more Bible that I have to show you is this little Hebrew Bible, and this was just a tiny Bible. It was only about um, this big, just real small, and um, it was all in Hebrew, which was interesting. And I picked it up just out of curiosity, really, if it would even sell, and it sold overnight. I, I bought it for a dollar, and it sold for 20 very quickly, so I will definitely be on the lookout for more um, Hebrew Bibles. All right, here's another pair of those silhouette hingeless frames. These things are just like, they sell like hotcakes. Um, this one was a pair, it was a black pair in really nice condition. I had a case to match, and they sold for $90. So definitely be on the lookout for these little silhouette frames. I find them pretty often, and they are very popular. And even if they're not in the best condition, I've even had people message me and ask me if I sell just the individual pieces, like somebody might need a new bridge or need one just, just one arm in a certain color or something. So definitely grab them, even if they're not in the best condition, um, and sell them for parts. All right, next, this is a pair of vintage Hemingway eyeglass frames. These are also prescription eyeglasses that somebody will most likely change the lenses in for their own prescription. Um, these were really neat because they had this little metal detail on the ends of the earpieces there. You can kind of see that. I'll show you the name. Ernest Hemingway. Those I paid two dollars for at a thrift store and they sold for thirty dollars. And then this is a pair of Pro Design. I have sold several pairs of these Pro Design eyeglasses as well. These are also prescription eyeglasses. Pro Design Denmark. And they sold with a case that matched. I purchased these for $4 and they sold for $40. Okay, here is a pair of Polo Classic. These are vintage Polo glasses. Um, see if I can show you the name there. Polo Classic 4 Deluxe by Ralph Lauren. Um, these I found at a thrift store for a dollar. I had a case that matched, or a, a polo case anyways, so I threw that in with it. So total is two dollars, and they sold for forty-five dollars. And then this is a pair of Tech Flex. I also had a case for these. Tech Flex case. And I bought these for $2 at a thrift store and $1 for the case, so that's $3 invested, and they sold for $40. Let's see if I can show you the name there. Tech Flex on the arm as well. Alright, this is a pair of Anon or Anon. I'm not sure how to say that. Anon. This was a pair of ski goggles I found. I paid $6 for these. They were in really nice condition, and they sold for forty dollars. This is a um, a set of drawer pulls. So these were um, like a Southwest design drawer pull. I found a big bag of these. I think there was there was fourteen of them, fourteen pairs in the bag. So there were two pieces each, and there was fourteen of them. These were KBC was the name on them. They were brass, and so I had them listed for, I believe, six ninety-five dollars per set, and somebody messaged me, offered me um, $5 per set for, for all of them, and so I went ahead and took that offer, so I think I sold them, I think it was like $60, so yeah, I paid $5 for all of them, and I sold them for $5 each, so I think I made about $50 on those. My profit was $57, $57.94 profit. So that was definitely a really good find. All right, this is a vintage Springbok puzzle with a San Francisco theme. And you just kind of go around it. This was from 1965. The box was not in the best condition. In fact, when I found this at the thrift store, it was on the floor upside down in the kids' department the toy department so it was just getting kicked around and so I picked it up and dusted it off they wanted two dollars for it so I bought it and 
it sold within just a few days for $45. Okay, this is a um, GE hair curler set. This is a vintage hair curler set. And this was in my death piles for months. <laughs> and I couldn't, for some reason, I just could not get the motivation to list it. And I moved it around several times from like when we were moving from one camper to another and storage units and things. And I don't know why. I just could not get motivated to list it. I finally got it listed and it sold within like two days. So I should have sold it a long time ago. <laughs> but um, it sold for $40 and I paid $5.50 for that. All right. This is a solitaire game. A handheld Radica solitaire game and I believe this was from the 90s oh yeah I put it right there 1997 so must have been um, this was something that I learned about from Chad over at the Golden Finger Picker YouTube channel um, he does these great videos once in a while that are like 101 things that sold on eBay and um, this was one of the things that he had um, featured in his I think it was the last video he did and so I was at the thrift store shortly after that and I saw it. I believe it was $3. So I picked it up and it worked really good. And it sold within a couple days for $30. So thanks Chad for that sale. And here's another one that Chad had mentioned that I picked up because of his advice. This is a under the counter um, can opener, like a space maker can opener electric can opener and it was GE it had the box and the instructions and everything and it even had the mounting hardware there and this was five dollars at the thrift store and I picked it up per Chad's advice and it sold right away for thirty dollars okay and this one is a Nesco dehydrator so this was a dehydrator it was in the box um, it was nice and clean didn't look like it had been used much at all it also had this um, jerky maker set that was something extra that didn't come with it. But it was in the box with it, so I just included it um, all together. And so that sold very quickly for $50, and I paid $5 for that. Paul Revereware Pan. So there's the lit name, Revereware. Um, this I purchased at a thrift store for $6. So I have sold a few other Revereware things. I know I've sold um, some teapots. So I'll definitely be on the lookout for those in the future. This is a vintage Nambe butterfly bowl. So this is a, the name on it is Nambe. But it was a really neat bowl, very heavy. Um, this I purchased at a thrift store for $3. And it sold for $30. Okay, so this is an Epson photo printer. It was brand new. It still had the tape on it. Um, it still had the, like the Saran film on the top of it. It was in excellent condition. I don't think it had ever been used. And I bought it for $9 at a thrift store. It did have some scratches on it right there. But I bought it for $9 at the thrift store and it sold for $90 plus shipping. And this is something that my husband picked up. He paid $30 for this at a thrift store. It was like a um, photographer light. It had like a strobe light function and different things on it. It did work. And it did have a good bulb and everything. But the tripod piece was missing. So that sold for $75. And then I have a couple Bonanza sales. So this was a indoor smokeless crock grill and I found two of these within just a few days at different thrift stores for five dollars each and they both sold very quickly both on Bonanza within just a few days so definitely be on the lookout for these guys I've been watching for more of them they're big heavy crock pots so this one sold for thirty nine dollars and fifty five cents plus shipping then I had this other one that was um, an off-white color with the box that sold for fifty nine dollars plus shipping and if you're not familiar with Bonanza, this is Bonanza. And Bonanza is a really cool site. It's very similar to eBay. And actually, if you already have listing on, listings on eBay, you can bring them right into Bonanza. And there's no charge for listing. Um, they're 
Final value fees are pretty low. In fact, I did a video about Bonanza not too long ago, so if you check my channel, you can find that. And, um, you know, I don't make a ton of sales on Bonanza, but, you know, I, I do make a few sales a month, and they're usually pretty decent sales. So, all right, well, that's all I have to show you for today. So I'm going to get this video wrapped up and get it posted, and I will see you in my next video, I guess. So thanks for watching, and take care.